Hi guys, my name is Karthik and I am from executeautomation.com and welcome to part 8 of our understanding docker for windows video series. And in this video, we'll be talking about working with windows server containers. And before watching this part, I would request you to please watch part 7 since this part is going to be a complete continuation of that part. So without watching that particular part, you will never understand what we're going to really talk about in this particular video. Alright, so let's get started. So for that, I'm going to flip to our Hyper-V manager. So far in our video series, we have been using the Windows 10 operating system in our virtual machine. This one, right? So I'm going to close these guys right now. So in our last last video, we were using the container to run the Internet Information Server. So I'm going to close all of these guys and I'm going to shut down this particular machine because I'm not going to use this machine for now. And then maybe in the later point of time, we're going to make use of the comparison of the Windows Server container versus the Hyper-V container and we'll see what is the major difference between both of them. Maybe by the time we can switch on this machine. So I'm going to shut down this machine for now. Alright, it turned off. And then I'm going to switch my attention to the Windows Server 2016 virtual machine. So this is a developer edition. So it's a development edition. So I'm just going to open that. So it's going to boot. And I have actually installed or maybe pulled some of the images from our docker.hub.com because sorry hub.docker.com because it's going to take a lot of time because this time I'm going to show you the Windows Server core image as well right so let me log into this particular operating system so if you see this administrator here which means it is a Windows Server operating system because the wallpapers and everything are pretty much same other than some changes here and there at least in terms of what I'm showing it to you. So, so this is the Windows Server operating system 2016, right? Now, I will show you how it looks like. So, I'm going to open the PowerShell. And then, let's do this. Docker images. And you can see that I have so many images right now. I have the images for the Nano Server, Internet Information Server. And I have the Internet Information Server for the latest, meaning it is going to run the full-blown Windows Server core. All right? That's why the size is like 9.71 GB, too huge. And then there is a Windows Server core image as well. I have the latest version and it's 9.42 GB. And there is a Nano Server and there is a Microsoft SQL Server Express Edition. Right? So I have everything. I have all these images downloaded for this demonstration purpose so that we don't really have to waste our time at least in terms of downloading. So what I'm going to do is, so I'm going to show you what is the major difference between the Hyper-V container versus the Windows Server container. In our Windows 10 operating system, we installed the Docker client, which is nothing but the Docker for Windows beta version, right? We just installed that and we then switched to Windows container, which was pretty straightforward. And in Windows Server, it is going to be even more faster than the one which we did before. And the reason is because we are actually going to download or maybe use the Docker daemon alone. So there is two things. One is Docker and then is another one is called as Docker daemon. So we actually require only these two processes in Windows Server instead of the full beta version of the Docker for Windows. So if it really doesn't make any sense what I'm really talking about, so let me go to the browser. I think I have Chrome because server has too many securities. So Docker for Windows Server 2016. And if you go here, there is something called as Windows Container on Windows Server 2016. If you go here, you can come here and you can see that there is something called as install docker. And you can see this time the docker installation is pretty straightforward. All you have to do is you need to install the docker using the one get provider powershell module and this is going to contain the docker daemon. Pretty straightforward. And you can see there is something called as install module docker msft provider repository ps gallery and force. And then you need to install the docker msft provider and restart your machine and then you need to install the windows update if you want because sometimes even though this is the latest operating system there are some updates for the docker for windows so i i actually did all these things only then you can see this docker images here right so i actually did everything from this particular page 
the Windows Server container and there's a quick start, quick start Windows Server. So this is the link which I used for installing the Docker. Because this time there is nothing called Docker, the veil is missing here. You remember the veil which we saw in our Windows 10 operating system? It's not here in, anymore because it's going to be completely PowerShell. And you can just go to the task manager. Let's go to the more detail. You can see there is something called as docker d.exe. So only this particular process is currently running. The docker d is nothing but the docker daemon process. That's it. And there is no other process actually running for the docker. Only this particular process is running. And then Windows Server 2016 is going to take care of everything, right? So as I said, please install the module for the Docker MSFT provider and then this and then restart the computer. That's it. And if you want to see what's really happening behind the scenes, if you just go to the one get provider of the PowerShell module, it's going to take you to the GitHub and you can see that this is the package manager for the one get and one get is more like a new get package manager for PowerShell, something like that. And it's going to actually install Docker daemon for you in your machine, right? So it's pretty much straightforward. All right. So once the installation is done, you can actually spin up your Docker as pretty much as you did for your other images in your Windows 10 operating system. So if I want to run this Docker run, let's say I'm going to run this interactively for nano server, for instance. So let's say Docker run hyphen IT and then I'm going to specify Microsoft Nano Server and I'm going to say C, right? And I'm going to say echo. There we go. Now you can see there is an execute automation printed in here. And this time it is pretty straightforward, right? Because this is not actually running in the Hyper-V containers anymore. It is actually running with the Windows Server containers and it will be very, very faster. Right? And now you can actually do this. You can go to the docker ps hyphen a and you can see what are the process being running. So basically I was just trying to play around with it and I was seeing like whatever processes, how this particular operating system is actually working. So it was pretty straightforward. Again, you can see that the one we just pinned up a minute before it actually exited by showing this bigger message and it is pretty much exactly the same thing that we saw before. Now let's see what is the other difference while compared to the Hyper-V containers, right? So I'm going to detach the particular process and then I'm going to just run this particular container and let's go to the task manager and see what are the process being running in here. You can actually see that this time the Hyper-V virtual machine management service is running but there is no other virtual machine is being spinned up in here as we saw in our Windows 10 containers, right? There was a Hyper-V container, something like that. Those things are completely missing this time because this is completely different from the one which we saw in our Windows 10 Hyper-V containers, right? So that's what it is. So this is one of the major difference and that's why it is very faster compared to before. And you can actually see there are many other differences, something like this. If I go to the disk manager, so let me go to the disk management. Let's go to the computer management and here we can go to the disk management from here. Okay. So there is a disk manager, right? And there is a disk management. So this disk management, actually you can see that within this disk management right now, I have a C colon, but what if I do this? What if I try to do something like this? Maybe instead of this daemon process, let's try to run this as an interactive process so that it don't close the particular container being running and it's going to take some time and now if you go to the disk management this time you can see that we had a disk zero before but now we also have something called as disk one and it has something like a 19.87 gb of space with an ntfs partition how is this suddenly coming in and the color is also different for this disk zero and disk one so this basically tells that how same kernel is being shared between your running container as well as the host machine. So we'll actually deal about all these things in much greater detail in our 
upcoming videos of this particular course so for that guys please stay tuned so that we can see how to hack around with this particular disk in our next video so once again thank you very much for watching this video and have a great day